one possible natural method where life can move from one planetary body to another. However, surviving long enough in space is difficult in the extreme, and then the chances of landing on a suitable habitat are very unlikely. However, there's another possible method which gives us a method of protection to the rigours of travelling through space, but it does come with its own pitfalls. The ideal way of moving a living organism and surviving in space is not to have any exposure to space at all. Well, the natural way this could happen would be encased in solid rock. There are plenty of living organisms which live deep in the rocks on Earth, and some of these would probably be able to survive extended periods in space, so long as they avoided direct contact to space itself. However, the problem comes in moving rock from one location to another. The Earth, of course, is hit by rocks from space all of the time. There has been some speculation that life on Earth could have arrived in the form of asteroids or comets from our own solar system. However, this is highly unlikely, as the conditions for creating life are dramatically easier to produce on Earth than they are on any comet or asteroid. There is, however, one possibility which is more likely than the others. That is, life may have come from outside of the solar system. Our planets are occasionally destroyed or severely damaged by collisions with other bodies in space. Such a collision could spread life-bearing rocks throughout one solar system and beyond. However, could one of these rocks make it from one solar system to another? Well, we know that asteroids and comets can escape our own solar system, so this certainly seems possible. However, we do run into some probably really some insurmountable difficulties if the life is actually being brought to Earth in this manner. Firstly, space is really big. Whether being encased in solid rock, life could survive for thousands of years or more needed to travel from one solar system to another is highly unlikely. Then the chances of actually managing to encounter another solar system is really remote. Then finding a suitable landing site like Earth and missing all the gravitationally massive structures like gas giants and also the sun. And then not burning up on re-entry into the atmosphere. All this put together, though possible, for life to have come from another solar system, it's highly unlikely. So the most likely form of life arriving from Earth from outside our planet is coming from the relatively short journey by living organisms being pushed out by the sun's solar winds from a relatively large planetary body where life could possibly have started. This really only leaves us with one location, Venus. If life did start on a solar system in a place other than Earth, Venus does represent a likely candidate. It certainly would be possible for that life to become airborne, or leave Venus's atmosphere, survive the relatively short journey to Earth by being pushed by the solar winds, and arrive relatively safely on Earth. So far, however, I've been focusing mainly on life arriving on Earth. There's also the possibility that life could be leaving Earth and arriving on another planet. However, other than spreading to Mars, in general, spreading life out from Earth are the same major obstacles that life arriving on Earth has, with one major exception, human beings. Various schemes have been put forward over the years, like terraforming Mars. However, the currently conventions on planetary protection mean that missions to other planets must be sterilised to avoid contamination with life on Earth. However, the deliberate spreading of life by humans to other planets might not be our only role. Space missions have a problem with what to do with human waste matter that's being produced. Any food that passes through the human digestive system is acted upon by billions of bacteria in the gut, and many of these are still present in our excretions. The waste is jettisoned into space, and whilst most of this re-enters the Earth's atmosphere and burns up, some of it still orbits the Earth, and some manage to leave the Earth's orbit and travel into space. These frozen solid lumps of biologically rich material certainly have all that's needed to transfer life from one planet to another, and due to the amount of it that humans have produced and the protection offered by the outer part of the deposit, it's certainly possible that humans could be unintentionally spreading life throughout the universe. It could be a case of one small storm for a man, one giant leap for life in the universe.